Good morning, everyone. Uh, very Merry Christmas to our friends who are celebrating Christmas. Uh, thank you for joining me this morning to learn more about beans, growing beans and cucumbers. I'm Lillian Kuo, and some of you will know that I work in the Pasir Panjang Nursery, where we grow many types of plants for planting in our parks and gardens, nature reserve, streetscape, and many more. Okay? My team is also involved in the preparation of seeds of edible plants, which we gave to the public a few months ago. Amongst these seeds, we have included long beans and cucumber, which I will talk about today. Okay. On my left, I have some um, nice, I have a nice long bean plant. Okay. And uh, most of our beans are grown from seeds. So I'll start by collecting the seeds. Okay, we have different seeds of the bean family. You can see them on this plate here. Mm. I have the green yard long, long beans. This is the most common of all the long beans. I have the Thai army long beans. It has its white color with red spots. I also have the Chinese red noodle long beans. There's a very pretty red color. Okay, so let me show you the beans, what they look like inside. If you cut open the seeds, you can see that these are the seed pods. This is the army, Thai army seeds. And this is the Chinese red noodle seeds. Okay, first of all, you may ask, how do we collect seeds, right? Um, when we harvest the long beans for food, we like them nice and tender. This is the one that's slim, nice and tender. Okay, this one on the left has got bow juice. You can see there are seeds inside. But please wait until the seed pot turns brown. When they turn brown, they're matured and they will produce seeds which are darker in color, red to brown color, and these are ready for germination. Okay. What do you do with all the seeds that you have collected? Some can be sown directly into this seed tray. You can put one in every square. Okay. Here I'm using a recycled seed trays. I fill them up with well-drained soil and I put and I can also use recycled paper cups okay, for planting the seeds. The excess seeds, what do you do with the excess seeds? I can store them for at least three months in recycled bottles like this containers or in a clear, clean bag. Okay, it's very important when you store the seeds, please remember to label them. Okay, why do we label them? Because a few months later, you may not remember how old are the seeds, you may not remember what seeds they are. So, always label them. It is useful to have Labels, okay, just write the name of the plant and the date. Okay, sometimes I also put in the name of the person who has collected the seeds. Okay, the extra seeds you can share with your friends. You can also um, give them away as uh, exchange with other gardeners. Many gardeners are 
they're very active. They grow a lot of things and they, they can exchange the seeds because sometimes you just have too much. You know? So what do you do with the seeds that you have packed? Please store them in the lower compartment of the fridge, not the freezer, that's too cold. You put them in the lower compartment and you can safely keep them for up to six months. Some people even keep them for up to a year. Okay, but personally, I will use them when they are less than three months old because the viability of the seed depreciates with time. If I were to harvest them today and I plant them straight away into the trays, into a soil, like this, I can put about two seeds into this pot. Okay? The germination rate is very high. It's almost 100%. If I were to keep the seeds for another two months to three months, the germination would drop to about 50%. And if I keep them for about six months, the germination would drop even further. So only about two to three seeds would germinate. Okay. After putting them in the soil, water them lightly, just a bit of water, and put it in a sunny position. Just a bit of water will do. Okay. In about two weeks' time, you should be able to see the seeds germinate. This is what it looks like. Okay. But you have to wait. You cannot move them till they have two pairs of leaves, or what I call four leaves. This is the first two pair, and this is the second pair of leaves. Okay. When they're this size, they're ready to be moved to a bigger pot. So I would choose a pot that is at least 15 cm in diameter to transfer the seedlings to. So if I'm using a recycle pot like this one, I do not need to remove the plant. It goes straight into the pot. I fill up the pot half with well-drained soil and I put them straight in the middle and I top up with more soil. And I water the plant with about half uh, one cup of water. Your drinking cup, one cup would do very well. Water the soil. Don't water the plant. Eh? Water the soil. If you're using well-drained soil, you will find that the water will, the excess water will drain out in five to ten minutes time. So remove the excess water. You don't need them. And for good housekeeping, you don't want to keep the water in the in a tray because you may have a mosquito breeding problem later on. So remember, well-drained soil, you don't need the excess water. And for plants like long beans, four anger bean, French bean, and cucumbers, they're all climbers, so you need to have a trellis. So you use three bamboo pole or wooden poles. You can tie it with garden wires or you can also use cable tie or cotton yarn. You make a tripod. Okay. Put it carefully over the plant. Slowly. Push it all the way down. Press the soil lightly. And this plant will climb onto the trellis. Okay, put this plant in a sunny position. Water every day, once a day. If you feel the soil and it feels dry, then you need to water. But if the soil feels damp, 
then you don't need to water for the day. There's enough water inside. Okay? Okay. Beside long beans, uh, of which just now I was saying, we have three types of long beans. The yard long bean, Thai army bean, Chinese noodle, Chinese red noodle long beans. We can also grow the French beans. This is the French bean. It's very commonly found in our markets and uh, used in our local cuisine. Eh? Okay. What happens when you don't have the seeds of the long bean but you want to grow it? You can buy the seeds from the plant nurseries or from plant sale centres. Okay, when you plant, buy seeds, please look at closely at the seed packet before you purchase. It should tell you the name of the plant. It should tell you like how many days you need to grow it to get flowers and fruits. It will also tell you how many seeds are there in the packet. Like this one has got 15 seeds. Okay? And at the back of the pack, it will show you the expiry date. This is very important. Do not buy seed packs which are near expiry date or less than six months expiry date because uh, the germination rate of the seeds will drop. Okay. And after you have opened up the seed pack, and you have planted seeds. Let's say out of 15 seeds, huh? for today, I only want to plant five. So can I keep the rest for my next crop? Yes. But remember, you need to seal back the... After you have opened, you need to seal the pack back. If you can, put it uh, in a clean plastic or recycle container. And you put it back in the lower compartment of the fridge. Then you can keep it for at least another one to two months. And label it. This time, you can put the date that you open. Okay? So besides French beans, we can also grow four anger bean. This is a very pretty, uh, attractive four anger bean. It's red in colour. It is also called the wing bean because of the frills on the side. Okay. It is less common, so uh, the seeds should be available by next year, I think. Yeah. The very common green bean would be this one. Green beans are they get eaten as salad. You can also cook them, stir fry. Let me show you what it looks like inside. I've cut up the mature seed pod and you can see the seeds are inside. The seeds are over here. Okay. The germination rate should be very good because they're fresh. For the wing four angle bean that you use for food, if you cut it into half, you will see that they don't contain many mature seeds because um, you harvest them when they are young and tender for food. They are less chewy. When they are older, they become very fibrous and very tough to chew. So they are not uh, ideal for eating. Eh? So this is what they look like when they are young. Okay. Mm. Besides four anger bean, we can also grow um, soya bean. Soya bean seeds look like this. But soya bean don't need a frame because they are not climbers. You don't need a trellis. Okay. Okay, besides the beans that we grow, um, we also uh, can grow the cucumbers. Cucumbers are not 
in the same family as the bean. But today I'm, I've included them because uh, cucumbers grow in the same manner as the, the long bean, French bean and the salt bean. Okay, we have many types of cucumbers available in the market. This is a matured uh, cucumber, the common, commonly it looks like this. You find them in the market and when they grow, when they mature, when you keep them on the plant for a longer time, they look like this. Okay, and if I were to cut up the mature cucumber, you will find there are seeds inside. Some of them are matured and you can usually, you can actually use them for uh, planting. Okay. We also have the Japanese cucumber. They have a very nice uh, shining surface and if I cut them up into half, they look like this. The seeds, they don't have much seeds, so you can't grow them. There are also mini cucumbers. So some cucumbers are short and small. Used mostly in salad and also used for juicing. Huh? Some people like to drink cucumber juice. Let me cut them into half. Okay. Mini cucumbers look like this. So there are also no seeds. Huh? As you can see, the seeds are not ready for uh, planting. So you need to either buy the seeds from plant nurseries, from plant sale centers, okay? Or maybe share, get some seeds from your friends if they keep the seeds longer. Okay. One common question that I get from uh, my gardening friends and from my students. Um, my cucumber plant only has male flowers. There are no fruits. So what do I do? Okay. This is quite a common question. Eh? If when you grow the cucumbers, uh, you, will, you will start to have, at about 70 to 90 days, you will have a lot of male flowers. Cucumbers will produce, first of all, a lot of male flowers. Yeah. Then after a few weeks, you will see female flowers. Okay. The male and female flowers look a little bit different. Male flowers are, are yellow in colour. They have a very short stalk. The female flowers look a little bit like the male flower, but there's a little fruit behind. So you can, if you look closely, there's a little fruit behind the flower. If you don't have enough, if, you don't, if your plant is not fruiting, there could be a few reasons. It could be that your garden does not have enough pollinators. By pollinators, I mean your garden may not have butterflies, uh, bees, ants, insects. Huh? Your garden is so clean, you don't have all this. So the flowers are not pollinated. So can you still have cucumbers? Yes. You have to do it yourself. Huh? So there are three ways you can do it. You can use a um, brush, a light brush. Touch the male flower, bring the pollen from the centre of the male flower to the female flower. You can also use cotton buds to do the same thing, male flower to female flower. Or if you have a lot of male flowers on the same plant, you can remove the male flower and bring it to the centre of the female flower and touch gently. Uh, be very gentle. You may not succeed in the first few attempts. But after a while, you should be able to see some of the fruits, some of the cucumbers being formed on the plant. Okay? Uh, you need to try. Huh? Don't give up. You need to try. And you should be able to find, you should be able to pollinate 
the male female flowers and uh, it, it should work okay don't give up huh? okay besides um, sorry yeah huh? besides cucumbers we can also um, we can also grow um, other types of um, beans generally the most common and the easiest to grow would be the long beans okay and followed by four angle bean french beans okay okay let me recap what are the best growth conditions for growing uh, beans and cucumbers the first important point first important element will be sunlight sunlight is very important and you need to put the plant in a sunny position it should receive at least four to six hours minimum of sunlight if you leave the plant if the plant receives more than six hours it's fine don't worry yeah? if you leave it there in, in a sunny position you don't need to move it it receives more than six hours it's fine okay I've also seen cucumber plants being grown indoors uh, in, a, in a home in woodlands uh, using artificial grow lights uh, they use two LED lights and the cucumber is actually able to grow flower and fruit uh, the light that they use uh, would have red and blue uh, rays and it mimics sunlight so that's why the plant can do well okay the next growth condition that you need would be a well-drained soil uh, by well-drained soil what do I mean okay the soil should have a mixture of loam, compost, mm, sand, and sometimes perlite. Well-drained soil means that when you water the soil, the water comes up in 10 minutes time. Okay. Where can you buy them? You can buy them from plant nurseries. You can also buy them from plant sale centers and even some supermarkets they sell potting mix okay the next growth factor would be water you need to water your plants every day um, for a pot this size I would pour in about one cup of water the cup that you drink okay and when you water the plant, please water only the soil. The excess water will drain out in 10 minutes. So there's no need to water on the leaf. Uh, if you happen to spray your plant and the water stays on the leaf, okay, uh, it's okay if you're not doing it in the middle of the day. I would advise you to water uh, the best time will be in the morning before you go to work or before you start your day or you can also water it at the end of the day after you come back from work try not to water in the middle of the day because when you do so water stays if water stays on the leaf okay uh, two things can happen water gets evaporated because of the heat and the other thing could happen that is the water stays on the leaf and when the sun shines on the water droplets you will find that the leaf the, the water droplet acts as a mirror and the leaf around the water droplets get scorched they get burnt okay so there's no need to water on the leaf please just water on the soil okay if it's if it's raining, do I need to water my plants? So 
You can tell by touching the soil. If the soil feels damp, then you don't need to water. But if it feels dry, then you need to water every day. Okay. Okay. Besides watering, I also need to make sure that my plant has enough nutrients to grow a lot of leaves, followed by a lot of flowers and a lot of fruits. So if my plant is uh, not growing well, I can apply a little bit of fertilizer. Okay, fertilizers, um, I would use or recommend use organic fertilizer because we are growing food. So fertilizers, uh, you can buy balanced fertilizer. You look at the, the fertilizer pack, it will tell you that the contents have there is NPK, uh, N stands for nitrogen, P for phosphorus, and K for potassium. And you would also find uh, sometimes that it comes with the word TE at the back. Okay, TE refers to trace element, and they include iron, zinc, copper, boron, a lot of other elements, which the plant only needs in small amount. So choose a balanced fertilizer. And <clears throat> I prefer organic fertilizers because um, organic fertilizers are very forgiving. Okay, if I were to apply for this pot, I would take one teaspoon. Okay, either once in a fortnight or if it's fast growing, once, once a month. For this plant, big plant on my right, I can apply two to three teaspoons. It's okay to apply less because uh, less, there's less danger of over-fertilizing. Okay? Uh, I prefer organic fertilizers because uh, when, you, when you apply them and you water, the plant will take, them, uh, will take in the nutrients in small amount. If you use chemical fertilizers, chemical fertilizers come in many colors, pink, red, green, purple, and if you apply too much, huh? chemical fertilizers, you've got to be careful. When you apply too much, what happens? When you water them, they all dissolve at the same time. And you find that the next day your plant is burned. The tips are all scorched. Well, because they don't differentiate. They all dissolve at the same time, and it's too strong, and the plant will die. Okay. Beside this four growth condition, that makes your plant grow very nice, full of leaves, full of flowers and fruit. You also need to manage the pests because there are many insects around us. So what can we do? Okay, With all this rain that we've been getting, uh, you'll find that some of your plants have fungal attack. Fungus attack the leaves. So is there a need to spray fungicide? Uh, for me, the, the leaves does not harm the fruit. Fungus will attack the leaves, but the fruits are generally all right. So if I'm growing it for food, I'm going to harvest the leaves and the fruit for eating. I will leave it alone. But can you spray fungicide? Yes, you can. Uh, but after spraying, please don't harvest any part of the plant for food at least two weeks. If you can, wait for four weeks. Okay, we don't recommend that you harvest yeah, so soon after spraying. Beside fungus, you also encounter caterpillars. When there are butterflies laying eggs on your plant, you will see caterpillars. So over here, I have a bean that has been attacked by caterpillar. Okay, the caterpillars go in and uh, they munch. So do you need to spray? Personally, I would not, you know, because I'm growing food. I will just normally, if I see butterfly laying eggs, or I see caterpillars attacking some parts of my plant, I will trim them and remove them. Okay, use a nice sharp secateurs. Prune off the part that is attacked. And remember, you need to move. You need to remove all these diseased parts away from the plant. 
don't put it back near the host plant because the eggs and the caterpillars will go back. Okay? So remember, good housekeeping. Remove them, bag them, and throw them away. Okay, beside caterpillars, the other things that will attack your plant will be the aphids. Aphids are very small. You can see them, and you, you can actually remove them. I wouldn't spray if it's just a starting uh, pest. Uh, I have some aphids attacking the plant. I would use the tissue. I would clean off the part of the plant that's been attacked. They will come off in the tissue paper, pack it, throw it away. Okay. The other things that will attack your plant would be the mites, spider mites or red mites. Okay. Mites are very, very small. You can't see them. You only know that they're there when, after they have attacked your plants. Just like aphids, they suck the juice out of your new shoot and new leaves, and your leaf will look distorted. They will not look normal either curly or you see spots on them, okay? So, uh, if you want to spray, uh, if, the, if the damage is bad, you can use an organic fertilizer, pesticide, organic pesticide, like neem oil, white summer oil, biometrin, pesticides which are made from plants. Why? Because this, are, this will not stay in the plant for long, and you need to spray like once in three days, okay? Uh, try not to use chemical pesticide. A very common uh, pesticide that we use, malathion. Uh, when you spray the plants with it, it stays in the plant for a long time. So you can't harvest for about two to four weeks, okay? So remember, good housekeeping is important, and uh, we, we would want our plants to be safe for consumption. So we try not to spray chemical pesticide. Okay? Where can you buy all these materials? You can look for them at the plant nurseries. You can also look for them at the plant sale centers. If they are out of stock, you can make a request. Huh? You can let them know that you want this product and they'll give you a call when it's in stock. Okay? Mm. Um, I've been asked very often about um, two questions that I get quite often uh, regarding growing of long beans and cucumbers. Okay. Now I move on to the question and answer segment to answer these questions from you. Uh, the seeds of the long beans that I get from the market. So, when you buy the long beans from the market, they are usually very tender, good for eating. Long beans are very good uh, sources of vitamin C, vitamin A, vitamin B. They are very low in calories and they, are, they provide fiber for digestion. So, they're very good uh, for our diet. But, as you can see, the seeds in the long beans are not formed. So you won't be able to grow them. Hmm? So the answer is no. You cannot use the seeds of the beans that you buy from the market. Let me show you what a matured seed of the long bean looks like. You can compare. Okay? They're large, they're black in color. Okay? And they're available you can buy the seeds from the plant nurseries, plant sale centers. Okay, uh, second question. Can I apply a pesticide to prevent my plants from having pests? Um, because we are growing edible plants, I would advise you not to. Uh, we, when, we, when our plants grow very healthily, it's full of leaves, full of flowers, uh, we are very worried what happens if the pests attack. Yeah? It is fine because 
you will still get to harvest most of the fruits. So uh, if, you, if there's no pests attacking your plant, there's no need to apply a preventive pesticide. If you have to, you can use an organic pesticide, okay? Because the rest, the chemicals, there's no chemical residue in the plant, okay? Now I move to the live uh, question and answer uh, segment. Many of you have uh, put in a lot of questions for me to answer today. So I will choose those which have been upvoted. Okay, question, how often do we add fertilizer to the plants? Okay, for fertilizers, I advise you to use organic fertilizer. How often? Once in two weeks, once a month. Okay, how much to add? One teaspoon to, for this pot, and maybe two to three teaspoons for this big plant. Okay. It's good practice to use less fertilizer. My rule is you apply less, but you do it often. Okay, so the plant can take up the nutrients slowly. Okay, next question. How do I get rid of those white bugs that infest the plants? Uh, the white bugs that you refer to could be millibugs, could also be white flies. You can apply uh, organic pesticide. You can also remove them using a tissue. Okay, if it's just if it's just one or two leaves, there's no need to spray. Huh? Just trim away the leaves. Okay, and throw them away. There's no need to spray. Okay, because you are going to harvest the fruits or the young shoots to eat. So I don't advise you to spray. How do I get rid of snails and ant infestation? Okay, when you look at the plants at night, you will find that there are some small snails attacking your plant. So snails are those with the shell. You also get those without the shell, we call the slugs. They only come out at night. Okay, how do you get rid of them? Uh, I would prefer not to buy the chemical snail pellets. You can use yeast mixed with water. You can also use uh, some, uh, some product that is uh, made that's related to yeast. Put them in a container, put them there overnight. The snail will be there in the morning, okay? How do you get, sorry, huh? how do you get rid of ant infestation? Okay, ants are attracted to the, the fruits. They're very sweet. When you grow your own vegetable, you realize huh, they taste very nice. They're very sweet. How do you get rid of them? Okay, ants are important for pollinating your flowers. So if, they, if they're not troubling your plant, huh, they, they will go away. They, they will not eat your plant. So uh, I, would, I would not worry about ants. There's no need to treat them because they're moving, they're always moving around. Every garden would have some ants, okay? And generally, they, they, don't, they don't damage the plant. Next question. Ah, this is a very good question. Can I grow beans and cucumbers without a trellis? Mm. For, for, for growing long beans, for example, the plant is a climber. It grows very fast. And if you don't have a trellis, okay, the plant will be all over the place. They'll be on the ground. They'll climb onto other plants because they have these tendrils on the plant that hooks, anchor the plant. The tendrils will anchor the plant. So if you don't have, 
Can you grow? Yes, but maybe not uh, so nicely. Okay. The same thing with cucumbers. If you don't have a frame for them to climb, uh, the cucumbers will also be on the ground, and the fruits will be damaged. Okay. You can make your own climbers using bamboo, wooden poles or sticks, or using wire mesh. Okay. The next question I have. Some long bean plant leaves suddenly turn yellow. What's the reason and what should I do? Okay, uh, I think the, the leaves of a long bean turn yellow suddenly could be because you move the plant from outdoor into indoor. If you move the plants away from the sunlight, there's a sudden change in the environment. The leaves will turn yellow. Okay, what should you do? If you, are, if you have a plant and you need to move it, you can install some artificial lights to provide the sunlight, six hours of sunlight. Or if you are just moving it for two days or so, it's okay. You don't need to worry. When you move, the plants back into the sunlight. Okay, the plant will recover and the leaves will become, the new leaves will all be green again. Uh, continue with the watering, continue with the light fertilizer. The plant will continue to flower and fruit. Remember to harvest your fruits every day because uh, long beans grow very quickly. Eh? If you don't harvest, the next day the bean may be too tough and, and it's no longer tender, uh, not, not, not good for eating. So remember to harvest them very frequently and you can keep them in a box, in a fridge, until you have enough to cook a plate. Okay. The next question. My long bean plants are heavily infested with mealybug. They are aphid-like insects that cover in wavy coats. I spray oil without success. Please advise. Oh, this question must be from someone who has been growing long beans. Okay, mealybugs are insects, white-colored insects. Uh, when you press them, there's a reddish uh, liquid that comes out. You can use white summer oil. White summer oil is organic. You have to spray thoroughly above and below the leaves to uh, make sure that you get rid of them. You can also try removing them physically, okay? Because there may be so many layers of insects that you don't get to spray every layer. Okay? Uh, I believe your plant is also weak, so apply a light fertilizer, some organic fertilizer, give it a, a lot of sun. Uh, don't cram your plants together. When you pack your plants too close together, uh, mealybug would also uh, appear. They like, they like that cram condition. Okay? When will I know uh, next question. Huh? When will I know what is the right time to harvest the vegetable? Okay. Um, if I'm using it for cooking, let me show you. Huh? This is an example over here. These are very young and tender long beans. Probably two to three days old. This is ready for harvest. Okay, this is one of them you can use. Let me compare another bean that's on the plant. This one, you can see that the seeds have bulged and it's quite tough. If you were to bend it, 
right? The tender one can be bent, very pliable. In the market, I see housewife breaking off the corner. It breaks off very easily, so it shows that it's very tender. Whereas if it's a matured seed pod, it's actually quite difficult to bend. Doesn't break so easily. Eh? Okay. You need to try to harvest your beans first. Okay. First time you may do it too early. Second time you may do it too late. But after a while you will realize that uh, what is the best time to harvest. Huh? It goes. It's the same for all the beans that you grow, whether it's long bean, French bean, or four angle bean. So you need to find out what is the best time. I will normally look at my plants every morning and I'll decide which are the plants that I can harvest tomorrow. Okay? Okay, I'll go to my next question. My cucumber plants will do well in the ground and in the pots and they bear baby cucumbers. Then suddenly the leaves will shrivel up and the plant will die. I fertilize my plant every two weeks. A few of them have suffered the same fate. I appreciate your advice. Okay. Cucumber plants and bean plants can be grown in, in the ground. Okay? We grow them in the pots because many of us don't have a garden to grow them, huh? so we grow them in the pots. So uh, I, would, um, I would say that why do they shrivel? One possible reason could be that you have added too much fertilizer and quite likely that the fertilizer you use is a chemical fertilizer. Because when you apply chemical fertilizer and you water, they all dissolve at the same time and the plant may find it too much. So what happens is the plant will be burned and it starts to die the next day. If you see it suddenly dying, quite likely it's a reason of being over fertilized using a chemical fertilizer. Or you may have sprayed a pesticide, a chemical pesticide, and you use too strong a dosage. The plant will also be burned. What do I mean by too strong a dosage? If you look at the label on the pesticide, and it says one capful to 1.5 liters of water. So you need to dilute one capful to 1.5 liters of water. Can you add two capful? Will it make the plant better? No. So be very careful. When you use chemical pesticide, you, I always advise you to use half. Use 50%. If it says one capful, use half. Half a capful. Okay? Then you will know that you will not kill your plant. Huh? Some people use half a bottle. Huh? They apply half a bottle and they spray on the plant. And straight away, the plant will start to die because it's too strong. Okay? Follow the instruction on the bottle, on the label. If it says use one teaspoon, I would advise you to use half. Okay? Or you, you use one teaspoon, but use double the water. Instead of 1.5 liters, use three liters. Your pail, your normal pail is about three liters. Okay? So that's just for a start. Because if you're new, you're not familiar with using pesticide, please start uh, with something that you're comfortable with. Use less. Uh, you know for sure that your plant will not be killed. How many people tell me uh, I kill plants? But you, you need to know why, why you kill plants. So very often, it's over-fertilizer and over-pesticide application. Okay. Uh, the next question I have is, what materials can I use to make a trellis? Okay. Today, I showed you. This trellis is about one meter tall. I use bamboo poles. These bamboo poles are available. You can buy them from the plant nurseries. 
You can buy them from plant sale centers. Okay. Beside bamboo poles, what else can I use? If I find some wooden, uh, thin wooden sticks, I can also use them. I like to use DIY, eh? and I like, I like to do it myself, and I like to use recycled material. So if I have a frame, like this metal frame here, it's a wire mesh, I can also make use of them. Okay, they're strong enough to hold the plant. So there are many materials that you can use. You can use wire, uh, garden wires to tie, you can use cable, cable ties, you can also use uh, cotton yarn, cotton ropes to tie, your, tie up your plants. Can I add fertilizer when the fruit is still growing? Yes, I can. Um, applying fertilizers, you need to be careful. When the fruits are just formed, many of you, many of us get very excited. We see fruits and we want to put more fertilizers. Why? Because we want bigger and better fruits, right? So we, uh, we get very excited. We go out and get more fertilizers to apply. There's no need. Why do I say that? Because there's enough nutrient in the soil for the fruits to develop. If you want to apply, yes, you can. Use organic fertilizers. They don't burn your plant. And when you water, they're released in smaller amount. So your plant will take it up. Huh? The roots are very important. The roots of the plant will determine how well your plants do. So don't, don't over-fertilize because you will kill the plant by uh, having too much uh, nutrient in the, in, in the, in the plant. Uh. So don't worry. Uh, you, you will know what to do as you try applying small amount of fertilizers. Okay, now I move on to the, I've moved on to the last question. Do we need to trim the cucumber plant? Okay. Cucumber plants uh, have very nice big leaves. Uh, if you need to trim, you can. Maybe some of the leaves don't look good. Use a scissors or use a clean secateurs. Okay, cut it and then remove the leaf away from the plant. But don't cut more than 30% of the plant. Because if you cut too much, the plant may be affected. No, it cannot regenerate. It cannot produce more flowers and fruit. It's good to cut, to do a little bit of cutting, trimming. You, after you harvest, the plant will produce more flowers and fruits. Okay, I've come to a close of today's session. Uh, if you want to have a look, uh, at the repeat of this session. It'll be uploaded tomorrow on the MPAX SG YouTube. Uh, there are also other online resources, gardening resources, that you can see. I have, uh, my team has produced some cooking videos on our YouTube. And you can use your long beans, your cucumber, uh, to, pre to uh, prepare a salad for your family. Okay, and um, all these videos are uploaded. Okay, thank you very much for spending time with me today. I wish you a happy gardening, and I hope you have a wonderful 2021. Thank you, and goodbye.